What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly manage your Facebook ads. Now this is not a super sexy topic, but it is something that you 100% need to know how to do if you're going to be using Facebook ads. Let's hop right into my computer and get into the value. Alright, so first I feel like we need to talk about your columns. So if you don't know what columns are, it's basically just the information that Facebook shows you when you're on your ads manager. Now I have two basic column setups for e-commerce. One of them is just what I'm normally looking at when I'm like, uh, you know, just glancing at my ads and stuff like that. And that is what I call my default column. And basically, I am not gonna read all of this. So if you would like to screenshot it and use it for yourself, then you are more than welcome to do so. <laughs> so my other column is my data column, uh, which again, I am not gonna read out, but um, basically that's just for when I'm about to kill an ad or about to scale an ad, or I'm running a video view campaign and I need to see the results for that. And it just gives you a lot more information that you really don't need if you're just quickly glancing at your ads. All right, so like I said, when you are just quickly glancing at your ads, I would use the default column layout, but you can also use data if you wanna look at all the information. So I generally tend to look at the past five days, and then um, if I am gonna be doing something with the ad, like scaling or killing it, then I'll look at the past three days and the past like seven days generally. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that thunder, but I'm sorry about it in advance. So um, before you are going to be killing or scaling an advertisement, like I was saying, you may need to look at different time frames, and you should also break the advertisement down because a lot of times you'll, if you do break it down, you'll find something that's just completely wasting your budget, which may be the reason why it's not getting the results that um, it could be or it could be the reason that it's just, it's wasting money and if you are gonna be scaling it, then you just want it to do best, obviously. So um, I recommend breaking it down. It really depends on what you're targeting, but um, I generally tend to break down by country, um, by device and placement. And um, if my ad set is targeting like a broader age range or a broader gender, um, then I will break it down by those as well. All right, so this is a common question that I get asked, and it's basically just when you should give up on a product. And that answer really depends, um, but as far as Facebook goes, at least, and I really recommend that you just test, and you kind of have to spend like three or $400 um, until you can get a good idea of like the product. So um, before you give up on a product, I recommend that you test at least two different ad copies. Uh, which is just basically the description of the ad. I recommend that you test at least three different video ads. That is going to have a huge impact on how well your product does. Personally, I test at least 10 interests before giving up on a product, but that's because I don't do normal interest-based targeting. If I am just doing interests, which some people do, I tend to stay away from that. Um, then you need to test way, way, way more than 10. But for me, I try to test at least 10 if I'm going to be doing the video view lookalike audience strategy that I've explained in a previous video that is floating somewhere above my head right now. So um, like I said, I do use the video view lookalike audience strategy and I do recommend that you test that before giving up on a product. And I recommend that you test a 95% video view lookalike audience with at least 150,000 people as data. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is completely fine. Just watch the video above my head or it will be in the description below if you'd like to watch it after you're done with this video. So another reason that you could not be making the sales that you'd like to make is because of your website. Now this could obviously be a ton of factors, but um, the main one is probably the price of the product. As long as your website is good, in other ways so I really recommend that you try testing the price uh, you know dropping it down if you're not getting the results that you are and if you are getting good results and I recommend that you try testing a higher price so if you still are not getting really good results then I recommend that you basically copy your competitors in a way now I really try to stay away from copying their descriptions and their ads and stuff like that and I still don't recommend that you do that 
if you're not getting good results. However, if you're literally about to give up on a product, then I recommend that you basically uh, copy a lot of the factors of their advertisement, uh, their website, stuff like that. So I'll take a competitor's ad. Hopefully it's not watermarked. Sometimes you can cover it if it is. Wow, that is loud thunder. Um, but anyway, you can basically just cut up your competitor's video and rearrange it a little bit so you're not going to get any penalties by Facebook and you can also get similar results if you do it the right way. Another part of duplicating your competitor's success is undercutting their price. Now this isn't completely necessary but a lot of times when someone is established and they've like built the product well like they have a ton of data they're getting a ton of sales then they're going to be able to charge a premium especially if it's a one product store. Now, if you are going to be copying your competitors and stuff like that, then I would recommend undercutting, sorry, undercutting their prices a little bit, just so you know that price isn't really the factor that's driving customers away. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about when to kill an ad set. So this really depends on the price of your product, because obviously if you're selling like a thousand dollar product, then not as many people are going to buy it and you're not going to be able to judge how well your ad set is doing off of spending like 20 30 dollars so for a normal price product which i consider to be 20 to 40 dollars that's like a typical range for a drop shipping product then i would recommend that you kill a product at 20 dollars if it has no sales and not many add to carts and there's not anything in your breakdown that's causing the budget to be wasted now if there is a lot of add to carts or a lot of uh, budget being wasted in certain areas and I obviously recommend that you fix those areas and I recommend that you spend at least $10 more just to test that ad set and see if your changes made any difference. So like I said before, if your product is lower than $20 or higher than $40, then it really depends when you're going to want to kill your ad set. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about when to know that you've got a winning product. Now, again, this really differs on how you're doing your advertising, how good your ads are and stuff like that. But one thing I just want to say is that my main winning product that has done over $200,000, probably over $300,000 in sales to this day, um, it wasn't that great of a product when I first tested it. I had a couple hundred dollar days and stuff like that, which was pretty good for me at the time, but um, it just, it wasn't like a winner, you know? And then I found a really, really, really good ad, which is probably like the fifth or sixth ad that I tested for that product. And it just took off. That's when I hit my first like three, four thousand dollar day. Um, it was crazy. So uh, the ad can really have a huge impact on how well your product does. So if your competition is selling the product successfully, for example, they have tons of ads with millions of views, then you obviously know that the product is working. However, if you have tons of competitors and tons of views and uh, just everyone's seen the product, the ads are months old, um, then your product could be saturated, which is obviously going to um, hurt your success. Determining the saturation of a product is really going to um, be an acquired skill. When you're constantly looking at ads, then obviously you're gonna be able to notice patterns. So if you see um, four competitors selling the product and March and it's currently July, and you see, you know, tons of ads for the same product, then you know that it's probably saturated. You can always search up the product on Facebook and see how many stores have posts for it and how many views that those posts have. So this is just something that I made and um, I, I really think that this is something that's important and it needs to be shared because people give up way too easily. A lot of times, uh, beginners will have a winning product that is 100% going to make sales with the right advertising, but they don't know how to target the right people and they don't have a good ad. And um, as you can see here, if you have a bad ad and bad targeting and a winning product, you're probably not going to get any sales. If you have a decent ad and decent targeting and a winning product, then you're going to get a decent amount of sales. But, and this is where the real money is made if you have a great ad with great targeting that is data driven and you have a winning product then it is going to be a true winning product and you are going to be able to get a ton of sales so unfortunately the only way to figure out if you've got great targeting and a great ad is through testing 
Um, and that's why you really shouldn't be afraid to spend money if you're a beginner with Facebook. Don't spend too much money on stupid stuff, but again, never be afraid to test and never be afraid to lose a little bit of money. Okay, so for scaling and descaling an ad set, this is something that I made a complete video about that's a lot more in depth, but I'll just talk about it really quickly. Okay, so I start with $8 ad set budget. Some people say $5, some people say $10, but $8 is just what I've found to work best for me. So I basically have this whole process where after a couple days I'll do this depending on how good the ad set is doing. So I'm not going to talk about this entire process in depth because like I said I already have a video on it but if you would like to copy my ad set scaling and descaling process then you are welcome to screenshot this or to check out the video that's above my head or below in the description. Not really sure yet. Okay, so for scaling and descaling CBOs, this is something that I'm doing a lot more with, but it's not really something that I have an exact science for yet. I'm sure most people don't because it's still something that's pretty new and it's pretty volatile. So what I've found to work best is to put my 10 best ad sets in a CBO. Generally, that's gonna be like 10 lookalike audiences because I don't know, it's just done some weird things when I'm with interest with lookalike audiences and I'm too organized of a person to do that. So I'll have like one CBO for interests and one for lookalike audiences. Um, so again, your top 10 ad sets go in a $100 CBO. I generally let that run for about two days and then look at it. If it's not profitable, I'll descale it by 25%, although that really doesn't seem to help it much um, just from my experience so far. And if it is profitable, then I'll just keep it at the same level because I, again, it's pretty volatile. So if it is still profitable after five days, then I'll scale the CBO 50% and just repeat that process until it becomes non-profitable. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you were able to take a lot of value bombs out of this that help you with your Facebook ads. As always, drop a comment below if there's any other videos that you'd like to see me make. Be sure to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.